So you're wondering what makes fiber actually healthy? And to be honest, it's a pretty good question. As for many people, fiber is just this component in our food that we don't digest and that simply passes through us without doing very much and at the very best helps us with number two on the toilet. However, it turns out fiber actually does quite a bit inside our body. On the one hand, it feeds our microbiome. So the trillions of microbes living in our gut rely on the fiber we eat. However, this is not all. I mean, we're not just feeding our microbiome with fiber and the microbes eat it, they thank you and don't give anything in return. They're not little egoistic bastards. They actually do something with the fiber of which we benefit from. And what they do with it is they produce so-called short-chain fatty acids. And these short-chain fatty acids seem to be very beneficial molecules for our health and these short-chain fatty acids are actually the main reason why fiber is healthy. So the main three short-chain fatty acids are acetate, propionate and butyrate. There are also others but these are usually the big three. And of these big three, especially butyrate is very well studied and seems to have a ton of health benefits. So let's talk about these health benefits really quick. Okay, before we start, my name is Patrick. I'm a PhD student and I'm simply fascinated by health science. And I focus a lot on the importance of the microbiome on my YouTube channel. And I would really appreciate it if you give this video a like because this tells the YouTube algorithm to distribute it to more people and thereby I might help more people to learn about the microbiome. Okay, without further ado, what does butyrate do or what do short chain fatty acids in general do? Well, butyrate for instance is the main nutrient source for our cells lining the gut. In fact, about 70% of the energy requirement for these cells comes from butyrate. So fiber is actually giving us energy after all. But that's not the main reason why butyrate is healthy. Butyrate seems to be a very powerful signaling molecule and can provide quite some health benefits. And one health benefit butyrate provides is that it reduces inflammation or short-chain fatty acids in general, reduce inflammation. How do they do this? Well, certain immune cells have receptors that can recognize butyrate and these immune cells are then further yeah, stimulated and proliferate. And in this case, it's actually regulatory T cells that have these receptors and that seem to um, proliferate when we increase butyrate levels. These regulatory T cells are very important because they are the so-called guardians of our immune system. They um, suppress inflammation if there doesn't need to be inflammation and they also help to resolve any um, chronic inflammation. There are actually studies in mice where they uh, take out this, these regulatory T cells and the mice kind of develop immediately autoimmune inflammatory diseases. But if we put back in the regulatory T cells, the autoimmunity is usually stopped. And there are also uh, studies in humans that show that people with autoimmune diseases or inflammatory diseases have lower levels of regulatory T cells. So showing again the importance of these cells. And butyrate seems to be really powerful in stimulating proliferation of regulatory T cells. So another thing butyrate seems to do is that it has anti-carcinogenic effects. I'm usually very careful if I touch the topic of cancer here on my channel because cancer is to some degree a matter of chance. It's a matter of random mutations in your DNA and then a matter of your immune system not recognizing these precancerous or cancerous cells. However, we can increase our odds. That's the best we can do. We can increase our odds in terms of reducing random mutations in our cells and making sure our immune system is ready. There's still no guarantee that we don't get cancer, but that's the best we can do, increasing our chances not to get it. And butyrate 
seems to be one of these um, joker that increases our chances but by a little bit of a different mechanism. So it's gonna be a little bit technical here so I apologize for this but cancer cells are actually very different to our normal cells in the sense that they uh, obtain their energy differently. They actually shut down oxidative phosphorylation and obtain most of the energy by burning through uh, shit tons of glucose via uh, glycolysis. It's called the so-called Warburg effect, um, discovered by a German scientist uh, called Otto Warburg. And um, so this is actually also the reason why cancer cells um, can be detected by just um, injecting some radioactive glucose and then seeing where all the glucose is metabolized and then you know oh, there's a tumor that are cancer cells. Okay, the cool thing about butyrate is it um, seems to be accumulating in cancer cells, at least studies suggest that much, and it cannot be used as an energy source there, opposed to healthy cells. And what it does then is that butyrate acts as a so-called histone deacetylase inhibitor. And by inhibiting, inhibiting histone deacetylases, um, it induces cell death in these cancer cells, so it induces apoptosis, which is a technical term of um, kind of self-suicide for a cell. Um, I guess every suicide is self, but I think you get the point. Alright, so this is how um, butyrate potentially can be anti -carcinogenic. Then. Another interesting thing butyrate does is that it decreases oxidative stress. It's not an antioxidant, it's not like vitamin C or vitamin E that directly um, acts as an antioxidant, but what butyrate does is it increases the levels of our own uh, antioxidant proteins. So there was actually a very interesting study and I already need to smile a little bit, um, that <laughs> in this study they uh, recruited healthy volunteers and gave them daily administrations through the rectum with butyrate. <laughs> However, the study was actually pretty successful and um, I'm just laughing because I'm wondering how they could convince healthy volunteers to do such a thing. Um, regardless, the study was pretty successful in terms of decreasing oxidative stress. They found that butyrate, compared to the placebo, increased the levels of um, antioxidant proteins and decreased general oxidative stress in the body. So it was, was a very positive outcome. Okay, another thing butyrate or, and uh, short-chain fatty acids do is that they prevent gut permeability. I talk about this a lot. And gut permeability sometimes has a bad name to it because people say that leaky gut is not a thing. I think leaky gut is a thing, but leaky gut simply means increased gut permeability. So if the cell wall of your gut, if your gut lining becomes permeable, different molecules that are not supposed to pass through can pass through where they are then recognized by our immune system which then cause inflammation. So this kind of goes back to reducing inflammation. Okay, so now what you do with this knowledge? How can you incorporate this knowledge in your diet or in your lifestyle? Should you simply go ahead and buy some butyrate supplements or maybe a binge on a ton of fiber? Um, it's actually not so easy. So first of all, not all fiber is created equal, only the soluble fiber is uh, degraded by our microbiome to short chain fatty acids, not the insoluble one. And there seem to be also huge differences in different soluble fibers. And it also really depends on your microbiome composition. Of course, it can change while you uh, change your diet, but you need to have the right microbes that produce the short chain fatty acids. The other thing is, that drinking butyrate, I don't think it will taste very good and I'm also not sure how expensive it is. But one problem is, and it has been illustrated by a very recent study, is that if you have having chronic inflammation in your body, butyrate might not do much. 
The study actually found that our cells become resistant to butyrate due to chronic inflammation. It kind of makes sense if you think about it because if you have inflammation in your body, your body thinks that something is wrong and that it needs to continue with inflammation and thereby it shuts down everything that potentially can prevent inflammation because it thinks it hasn't you have an infection or something and you're gonna die if it doesn't fight off the infection but of course if you don't have an infection which is the case for most people with chronic inflammation butyrate resistance can be a bad thing and you might find other approaches here Okay, that was on the negative side. Now, what to do on the positive side? So, there are actually studies um, that used probiotics in combination with fiber and different diet interventions, and they found that these um, approaches increase short chain fatty acid levels and especially increase butyrate concentrations. Now, I got to say that most microbes that we can take as probiotics, which are mainly lactobacilli, bifidobacteria, and uh, Streptococcus thermophilus, they don't produce butyrate. But the cool thing is, studies have shown that by just ingesting probiotic bacteria, and you know me, I'm usually advocating getting your probiotic bacteria from food, so fermented food, and not necessarily from pills, However, that the studies found that uh, probiotic bacteria do in fact help the butyrate producing bacteria in your gut to thrive and thereby increase butyrate level concentrations. So probiotic bacteria in combination with the right fiber might do the trick. Everyone will uh, react a little bit different. For some it might be a little better, for others not so much and you also have to be careful to not overeat on your fiber if you can't stomach it, if you're not used to it. But it is worth giving it a shot, um, at least if you consider the literature. I'm always basing my um, opinions on, of course, self-tests, but also on studies. And it seems that diet intervention that increase their fiber intake a little bit or that include some probiotic bacteria um, show improvements in all these four um, factors by increasing short chain fatty acid levels. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful. Again, for just for the YouTube algorithm, please like this video or share it directly if you find that somebody else can benefit from it. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you next time.